Hello and welcome back to Coindesk Fort and final day covering the World Economic Forum's annual meeting. We are in what is finally a sunny Davos, Switzerland after a solid week of intense panels and sessions both inside and outside the Congress Center and cryptos had a pretty strong presence throughout. Helene, what are some of your broader takeaways over the past week? Yeah, Sandra Rose said it best at the start of the week. Um, five years ago, they were the only crypto entity that was representing the industry here in Davos. Um, fast forward to today, we see so many crypto companies here um, talking about their projects, and not, side, not just outside the Congress, but they were invited into Congress to discuss controversial topics officially with economic leaders um, from the entire world. Um, so that's really interesting to me. And, you know, one of the main distinguishments that they make is between crypto as an investment and the blockchain technology behind it, which, you know, is one thing that they think is very revolutionary and um, is going to change a lot for the economy in the future. So we've heard from a lot of individuals and attendees present. Suddenly, what are some of the conversations you've had? What are people saying about being here this year? Yes, Nick, Coindesk actually got a chance to talk to a few people in and out of the Congress. And Helene yesterday spoke to Mike Chobanyan, who is the head of the Kuna Exchange in Ukraine. He was here to raise more funds um, via crypto to support Ukraine at this time. And we also got a chance um, to speak to a minister uh, from UAE. He's the Minister of Digital Economy, and he was telling us that his jurisdiction is no longer, you know, it, it, it doesn't have ambitions to become a crypto hub, but is already one. And they're working on a crypto and blockchain friendly regulatory framework at this time. So that was really uh, exciting to hear. Cool. And, you know, we've said at the beginning of the week, it's a interesting event given that it's the summer. Michael, you know, you've been here a couple of years now. What have you seen at the end of this week that, you know, you were looking at, at from the beginning? Yeah, like as we talked about in the very first pop-up video we did this week, uh, there's a, a much bigger branding presence, a really sort of prominent kind of modern marketing impression that the crypto companies have. But notably, this is this part of it, right? This is the promenade that leads into the Congress uh, where the, the WEF actually takes place. And as Helene was saying, there's a bit of a distinction between the way things are looked at between both of these communities. There they talk about blockchain as some sort of valuable technology, but there's a quite strong aversion amongst many of the establishment towards crypto. They see it as, as dangerous and so forth, right? So there's this really interesting structure to this. In fact, the only real crypto panel that we had at the WEF was the one that I moderated with a, 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 actually a bit of an all-star cast. It was a lot of fun. People should check that out. Um, but other than that, there was this really d detached way of thinking about this. But again, I think this is a really interesting symbolic divide between the crypto hordes, if you like, in, in the promenade and the establishment on the other side of the security barrier over there. This church here, I think, is also quite interesting as a symbol of all of this, because this is where Filecoin held three days worth of uh, discussions uh, around you know, crypto, Filecoin's uh, technologies and so forth. Now, if you think about what a church is, if you go back to, you know, for a very long period of civilization, it was really the only centralized source of information that communities had. There was only one person in the village who could, who could read, who would then read the word of God as if the priest was the embodiment of God, delivering it in a singular direction to the people, right? Things happened after that. Gutenberg invented the printing press and the Bible became something that was available to everybody else and people learned to read. We broke down those barriers that the church had because of the power of that technology. And it didn't stop. We got media. We've got, you know, the, the printing press was used for newspapers and then it became television. Television's almost with the, the, the broadcast tower being the replacement of the steeple of the church. Things have moved on. We then get the internet. The internet breaks everything all down, and now all of a sudden everybody can be a publisher. Everybody can talk. We've moved on from that. The problem, of course, being, and this has been a huge conversation at the Filecoin Foundation's undertakings, but lots of parts of what we've been talking about here, about Web 2.0 being a model of centralized control of the internet. So even though we can all publish, the management of all that data being something in the hands of these platforms. So this interesting idea that we are now flattening the whole thing by moving into a Web3 world in which blockchain technology and other technologies, let's be clear, there have to be lots of other pieces to this, are going to create, you know, the, they almost finish the work or at least take it to a next level from what was began by, by Gutenberg with his printing press. So there you have it. You have a church, you have a bunch of barbarians and people trying to get over that, that barrier over there. And I think this is a, a nice way to think about what this movement is all about. So we'll leave it at that. Yeah, it's uh, definitely going to be uh, interesting to see how this evolves. And 
you know, I imagine we'll be back here at the next World Economic Forum in Davos, and hopefully it'll be a bit more snowy at that point. But until then, thanks for tuning in.